Welcome to my shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. Today I'm going to rebuild the Marvel Shoveler carburetor on this John Deere 3020, so go ahead and follow along with me. In my hands is a Marvel Shoveler carburetor. If your carburetor looks a little different, you probably have a Zenith carburetor. I have a separate tutorial which outlines how to rebuild a Zenith, and you can click the eye in the corner. It will take you to a link to that video. But if you have a Marvel Shoveler, then this is the video for you. A Marvel Shoveler has an aluminum body, and the ID tag is on the back here. You can see the USX and then a number. It's important for you to find your ID number on your carburetor before you order parts so that you get the right parts for your carburetor. These Marvel Shovelers are found on John Deere 3010, 3020, 4000, 4010, and 4020 tractors, as well as a variety of Oliver and Minneapolis Moline tractors. This is a USX 36, and this is a Model 21. You can see that they look the same. Some of these carburetors would have a solenoid on the outside. If yours does, that's okay, you'll follow along. Um, mine just doesn't have a solenoid. But we're gonna rebuild one of these on the video, and my hope is that at the end of the video, you'll have the confidence to rebuild your own carburetor. The reason I'm rebuilding the carburetor today is because this tractor runs very poorly. You have to have your hand right on the choke in order to drive it around. Uh, it's wet stacking and is just really low on power. If your tractor has similar symptoms, then it might be time for a carburetor rebuild like I'm doing here. I removed all the screws around the edge here, and then when I take this off, we'll see inside the plate, and underneath this plate is the diaphragm. The diaphragm actually causes a lot of problems in the carburetor and the kit that I'm using today comes with a new diaphragm so I'm going to take this off and I'll show you the diaphragm inside there and uh, we're going to go ahead and replace it. I am using a basic repair kit today um, available from J&D Productions. Their website is farmtractorrepair.com. I'm going to take one more screw off and then we'll see the diaphragm inside. After this I'm going to do some disassembly on the bulk of the carburetor and I'll talk you through that too. Almost there. This last screw here is coming a little bit harder because of the spring underneath there. Okay, there we go. You can see the diaphragm inside there. We're gonna replace that. On the rest of the carburetor here, I am going to take the two screws out here so that the throttle plate will remove and then the throttle shaft will come out. There is a needle bearing inside of here and the needle bearing can be fragile and I don't have a new needle bearing. So I'm gonna put grease on it right away just to take care of that bearing once I pull the shaft out there. Over here, I'm gonna take out the fuel inlet. That just, I'm gonna use a wrench to get around there. The idle jet will come out. And then underneath here, I'm gonna take a screwdriver to remove this plate and inside there is a screen. When I pull that screen out, I'm gonna be very careful with it because I don't have a new one of those either, but I want to pull it out so that I can get it thoroughly clean. I'm gonna do some disassembly here pretty quick. And then once we come back for the reassembly, we'll go a lot slower step-by-step step for you to follow along. I'm taking this screw off of the end to reveal a tiny nozzle inside of there. Let me see if this screwdriver is gonna work for us. Yeah, so this nozzle will come all the way out. I'm taking this out for cleaning purposes so that I can get all of the passageways and everywhere clean. There's one more passageway underneath here, which I'll show you. And then we'll talk about the float. Let me get this all the way out. <laughs> This is a long one, there we go. Okay, that's what you need to take out too. And then underneath here, this just reveals a passageway. So we're gonna take this one off as well. Okay, next we have the float here. You can see that this float probably looks different than 
other floats that you are used to. It's made out of composite material and it's pretty indestructible. We do, do not offer a brand new float, so just be careful with it when you um, are pulling it out like I'm trying to be now. Let me turn it towards myself, there we go. Okay, just kinda gotta get it out on the angle. And that is the float. Underneath here, we have a needle and seat, which just removes as you would on any other carburetor. There's the needle, and then I'll take the seat out next. At this point, you want to thoroughly clean your carburetor. Wear safety glasses and gloves and use a can of carb cleaner to spray through the entire carburetor. Clean all the passageways, follow with a blow off nozzle and then spray it again and use a blow off nozzle again. Usually I'll use an entire can of carb cleaner on a carburetor of this size. You want to do the same. Don't skip out on the cleanliness of your carburetor because that is the ticket to your success here. Once it's clean, you're ready to put new parts into the carburetor. I'm gonna start up here at the throttle. So first we have a little packing here. You can see that there's um, two pieces to the packing which you just pull out with a screwdriver. First the um, metal piece comes out and then there's a rubber backer behind there, just like that. Then you can put in your new piece of rubber. This is directional. You can see that there's the groove on this side and this side is smooth. I'm putting smooth side in and the groove out towards you. I'm going to make sure that that's flat in there and then I'm going to tip the carburetor up and just set this on top and then I'm using a socket that is appropriately sized to help me just tap that into place. There we go. You can see that there. So now that is ready. Next, I'm going to just touch up the grease. Remember I put a little bit of grease in there when I took it apart just to hold the needle bearing in place. I want to just touch that up. A little bit of grease goes a long way, but I want to do a more thorough job than what I was able to do with my finger when I was disassembling. Next, I have a new throttle shaft. This comes in the basic kit. If you downgrade to an economy kit, then this is not included. So if you want a new throttle shaft, make sure you do that upgrade to the basic. You can see that my um, throttle shaft is through there. It's directional. You want to get yours in the same direction. Then I have my plate here. You can see that number. The number is going to go up towards the top and then it's going to, when the um, throttle door opens, it's going to be towards the top. So get yours in the same direction. I moved my plate so that it's straight across, or my shaft so that it's straight across. And then I'm going to drop my plate down in there. And sometimes I have to do a little bit of wiggling to get it on there like that. And then I have two screws with little washers that come in the kit. There's small ones and big ones that come in the kit. You want to use the big ones up here on the throttle shaft. Once you have your throttle shaft into place, you want to make sure that it moves freely without binding. If it is binding, it's going to cause you problems in the future. So do that double check before you move on. Next here, we have our idle screw. This adjusts the um, amount of RPMs that the tractor runs at when it's on idle. I'm going to tighten this up while I watch the throttle plate. And as soon as I see the throttle plate move, I'm going to stop. I think I'm right there, so I'm gonna turn this towards you so that you can see the throttle plate move and know what I'm talking about. Just as I see, move that, you can see the plate move ever so slightly. This is a good adjustment to start with. You can always make future changes once you have it onto the tractor. The next piece I'm gonna put in is this idle mixture screw. This helps the tractor to run smooth when it's on idle. It takes the flutter out. So I'm going to Screw this one in all the way. Notice that it has the lock nut on the end here. I'm going to put this in all the way until it bottoms out. And then I'll come back out a turn and a half. Again, we could always make an adjustment on that once the tractor's running, but the turn and a half is where we're gonna start. Right there is where it ended. Notice I didn't force it. I just let it end and then I came back out a turn and a half. The next step is I need to tighten up this lock nut that's on there. So I'm gonna put my screwdriver on the head to hold that into place at the turn and a half. And then, turn and a half is about right there. I'm going to tighten this nut up so that it's against the body to hold that into place. I'm just gonna tighten it with my finger as much as I can and then I'll finish that off with a pair of needle nose pliers there.
when you are ready to make this repair on your own tractor, you're going to need a carburetor kit. In this video, I am using the basic kit, which is here in front of me, gaskets, needle seat with a new throttle shaft and diaphragm. If you don't want to replace your throttle shaft, you can downgrade to this economy kit and it still has the diaphragm included. So this is still a good repair kit. If you are new to carburetor rebuilding and you think that there's a chance you would rebuild this carburetor and then you'd need to pop it open and you need a new set of gaskets, then you could purchase this gasket set in addition to one of your kits so that you have that flexibility and you aren't waiting on another shipment. That would really be the only use for this gasket set only. So three choices, you can choose whatever is gonna work best for your budget and for your carburetor. When you're ready to make the purchase, you can do so on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. I realize that you can purchase carburetor kits at many different places, but I ask that you give the business to my site as that helps me fund future tractor tutorials. In the bowl of the carburetor, I have this idle jet. I thoroughly cleaned this jet through each of these holes to make sure that it is cleaned out. If yours has um, some sediment in it, it'll cause problems for you. Once it's clean, you can drop it into place. I'm gonna start it with my fingers here and then I'll finish it off with a screwdriver. I'm gonna put this in before I move on to my needle and seat. This seat is a little bit different than something you might be used to. There's a small gasket that's in the bottom here. You need to make sure that you get your old gasket out. I used a pick like this one to pull out my old gasket. And then the new gasket just drops down, in, ooh, <laughs> drops down into place. Let me try that again. It doesn't go around the seat like you're used to. It just sets down in there. And then you can put the seat on top like this. Again, I'm gonna do this with my fingers as long as I can, and then I'm gonna tighten it up with a screwdriver. Then I'll put the needle and the float in. I'm gonna uh, have a new float pin from my kit, which I will use. I'm gonna try this big screwdriver here. There we go. Needle, oops, there we go, my float. Again, this is a little difficult to get in there. You wanna be somewhat careful with it because you don't want to damage it. I think if I turn it towards me, I'll be able to see a little better. I'm sorry that you can't see as well, but that's hard to do from the other angle. Here we go. Okay, so I got it into place just like that. I'm gonna use my new float pin to hold it in there. And then the book says to just eyeball it, make sure that it's setting straight across and I can see that mine is, if yours was crooked, you'd want to straighten it out and make sure that those pontoons there are straight across so that it'll float. I have my nozzle cleaned and ready to go in. I have the gasket on the end. I like to put this in while the carburetor is laying on its side so that the gasket doesn't fall off and get stuck down in there or messed up with my threads. I'm going to tighten this nozzle up all the way with a screwdriver here. And the next step will be to put the um, cap on it or the plug over the top after I get it tightened up. So bear with me here while I tighten it and then we'll move on. Remember this had such long threads on it. Okay, there we go. There's another gasket on the end here. So make sure you use that and it just sets right on top and that one gets tightened up all the way. I'll come back and tighten that one up. The next thing I'm gonna do is put my screen on the side. I cleaned this with carburetor cleaner and inspected it that it's not damaged, so I'm going to reuse it. I'll just set that into place, and then there's a gasket on this piece as well, and I'll just tighten this one up. Let's talk about the diaphragm now. This is a piece that is vitally important to the performance of your carburetor. Work carefully here and do a very thorough job on cleaning out all of the passageways. You can see that fuel flows through here and across here. I take the um, nozzle or the needle end of my carburetor cleaner and spray it through there and make sure that I have good flow. When I sprayed mine out, I got like black mud type material through here. If I have crud left in these passageways, then my tractor will not run properly. So I'm taking my time to clean that out and then also make sure that it's dry. I follow with a blow off nozzle to make sure that that is completely set. And then also in here, there's two little spots here that I like to spray with cleaner to make sure that it's clean. Once I have it clean, I'm ready to assemble the diaphragm portion. 
So uh, here is the brand new diaphragm. You can see that mine had a little bit of a wrinkle to it and I would imagine that was why I was having so much problem with the way that my carburetor was running. So if, a, if your diaphragm is torn or wrinkled or anything like that, you're gonna have problems. This just sets on here and then you can you know, see that it's directional, it lines up and then the spring goes on here. I'm gonna flip this over and set the spring into the hole there. Let me turn this towards you so you can see it. And then I'm gonna push this down. Again, being so careful with that diaphragm to make sure that I don't pinch it. I also make sure that there's no specks of dirt or anything whatsoever. I can't stress that to you enough that any sort of um, dirt inside here is gonna cause problems in the performance. So because of the spring here, I'm just getting all the screws started a little bit at a time, and then I'll tighten it up all the way. The next piece I'm gonna put in is this high speed jet. Notice that there is an O-ring on here. I picked my old O-ring off and put my new one on. You want to not skip the O-ring step as it holds it into place. So make sure that you have your O-ring on there and then you can screw it into the bottom of the carburetor here. This one I'm going to uh, screw in all the way until it's bottomed out and then I'll come back out one and a half turns just like we did up top on the idle. Underneath here, there's a um, passageway, which again, just needs to be clean. So don't forget about that area of your carburetor as well. I'm gonna push this in a little bit more, and then we'll be ready to come back out with that turn and a half. There we go, bottomed out. So that's one turn, and then a half will be right there. On the back, at this time, I am ready to put the end of my carburetor on. I have my gasket here and it's one direction is the way that goes on. So make sure you get it that correct way. Also, I didn't put any sealer in here. This is all clean and ready to go onto the carburetor. So let me flip this around and then I'm going to reuse the screws all the way around here without pinching that gasket. My last step is to put my fuel inlet into place. You can see that I have a little bit of sealer on there just to make sure that um, it's tight and I used a gas resistance sealer. I'm gonna tighten this up all the way and then I'll make sure that the, um, it's in a good position to line up to the gas line on the tractor. Up here, I have all the remains of my old gasket removed. Same with the tractor. I'll put my new gasket on and put it onto the tractor. My carburetor rebuild is now complete. I hope that this video gives you the confidence to rebuild your own carburetor. When you are ready to do so, please purchase the parts on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. Also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get a notification whenever we release new videos. And if you haven't been following our channel, we do have many John Deere videos on carburetors for different models and then also videos that are specific to this style of tractor behind me. So look for those videos and they'll help you out too.